We're here today sort of talking about online video fraud specifically, and I'm just wondering what the mindset is right now at Group M. I mean, is there a sense of worry, a fear? Is it panic? Where are you guys right now when it comes to fraud? Uh, uh, we're spending a lot of time and, and very vocal about it because realistically, you know, our job is to do what's best for our brands. Um, so we take it very seriously. Um, we believe that, you know, realistically today, uh, it's a good thing for digital advertising that has come to the forefront because the light shined and now is the time that we can do some major significant upgrades to the way we've been doing business. Um, the fact that ads are, are not seen and then also all of a sudden you have to say by humans uh, and actually use acronyms for that, it's actually a little scary. Um, but you know, again, we're getting to a good place, the industry is moving forward and publishers seem very, uh, very willing and eager to actually make it a better place for our brands. Now your brands are, you have a few brands in particular that are investing quite heavily in actually ensuring that their ads are viewed, specifically their video ads, et cetera. Absolutely. And what has been the, the reception by brands uh, when it's you know, sort of acknowledged and understood that they're going to have to bear additional costs in order to ensure their ads are viewed? Oh, additional costs on the technologies to do so? Yeah, on the delivery side. Yeah, um, yeah. so you know, they're, they're, they consider that just you know, cost of doing business. So it will be included into their, you know, into their overall ROI measurements. Um, so we don't, we don't look at this as a net negative from a cost perspective. We look at this as, you know, if, if a big percentage or any, any percentage of their ads weren't seen, that was wasted money. So now it just gets rolled back into the price. And how does this affect the sort of ever increasing shift specifically for video to, from kind of direct to programmatic platforms? Like, you know, programmatic ad networks, et cetera, inventory, you know, just the automated buy is a little bit harder. It's not as hands-on and high touch, right? So does that affect how you're moving dollars to and from different buying platforms at all? No, not overall. I mean, realistically, from a, from a, the automation perspective, you know, we, we spend a lot of time making sure that our brands are buying, uh, you know, preferred vendors, buying on sites that they trust. Mm -hmm. And we generally find that, the, you know, the, from a viewability perspective and or definitely from a fraud perspective, uh, it definitely does not live in, the, in what we call the, you know, the preferred brands out there. Right. right? It definitely goes lo a little longer. I mean, it's everywhere, don't get me wrong, but, but the longer they go on the tail, you know, the more that there's a little more worry from and quality. Have you found that on the buy side, publishers are sort of starting to stand up and take accountability and responsibility as well? Are they proactive? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, we've been talking about it for two years now, at least, you know, I have. And, uh, and a lot of publishers have invested to make sure and done redesigns on their websites, and a lot of them are still doing it to make sure that the ads are viewable. Um, so they're they're using very much the same vendors that we're, we we have deemed um, worthy of uh, of justifying whether an ad seen and seen by a human. Okay. So uh, yes. Group M's published a couple things in the last uh, few weeks. I know Rob Norman wrote something. Could you give us just a little, some highlights of that? Uh, some of the yeah, work? we uh, you know we've been working with the IAB and the MRC. You know we we have representative or we're helping to lead pretty much every industry initiative for the last couple of years regarding making accountable or uh, digital more accountable. Um, so when the IAB and the MRC came out with what they considered a minimum threshold on viewability. Um, we're, 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 we're creating our standard with our brands. So we've been sitting down with our brands, we've been sitting down with publishers, and we continue to do so to make sure that you know, we, we create something that's acceptable for our brands um, and, for the, and for publishers in, in doing the same, because you know, it's, it's a team effort. We need them, they need us. Um, so we came out and said that you know, one second, 50% of an ad, that would be a make good in any other medium. So we are, we're not good. That, the minimum threshold is not good enough for our brand. So we need, uh, we need an ad to be 100% seen um, or have a chance to be seen. And again, by a human, I might add. Uh, crazy, I have to say that. But, uh, you know, so that's what we've talked to, taken to the, to the publishers. And that's just for display today. Video, we're still waiting for the, for the MRC to lift its advisory. Um, but we're talking to these pub publishers actively and the IAB to make sure that we get ahead of it.